The rockers are now fitted into both rocker boxes. Thackeray washers, which are a type of spring washer, and cup washers must be fitted in the correct location in order to locate the rockers so they align correctly with the valves and push rods. Fitting all these parts can be somewhat challenging. The use of a dummy spindle made from 7 16 inch diameter rod with a tapered ground on one end makes the process much easier. Needle nose pliers are used to compress the Thackeray washers during fitting. The dummy spindle is gradually inserted as required to hold each piece in place. Just a few more pieces to go and we're done. The spindle can now be inserted complete with new o-rings to seal the blanked ends. To facilitate a good seal between the head and the cylinder, a copper head gasket has been annealed to make it soft enough to compress as the head is tensioned down. A thin smear of three bond has been placed around the six oil dowel holes in the gasket to avoid oil leaks at these points during operation. The head is lowered into place. Gaskets are coated with sealant and placed over the cam follower blocks. Seal cups are placed onto each gasket. Silicon sealing rings are fitted into each seal cup. And the push rod tubes are lowered into place against these sealing rings. The four outer head bolts are inserted and nipped up. The four upper silicon sealing rings are fitted onto the pushrod tubes. Push rods are inserted so they engage correctly with the cam followers at the bottom of the pushrod tubes. There is one pushrod in each tube on the drive side and two in each tube on the timing side. Each pushrod is given a final check to ensure that it's engaged with its tappet. Oiling or applying a light coating of grease to the cupped ends of the pushrods not only ensures they are lubricated ready for action at first start up, it also helps them to stay engaged as the rocker boxes are fitted. Valve stems are given a few squirts of oil that will run down into the valve guides, giving them some lubrication during the first startup. The valve tips are lubricated and the rocker box is lowered into position. Two head bolts are used to keep the rocker box correctly aligned while the push rods are introduced to the rockers. The cups at the top of the push rods must engage with the balls on the rockers. A few pokes and prods and the rocker box is ready for the remaining head studs to be inserted and nipped up lightly. These go through the rocker box and cylinder head to the pillar studs we fitted previously. The two coarse threaded quarter inch bolts are fitted. The inlet rocker box is fitted in a similar fashion to the exhaust rocker box. The head bolts can all be tensioned down in two stages to the correct torque of 18 foot-pounds. The workshop manual shows the correct sequence to tension down the head, starting in the centre with a diagonal pattern and then working in increasing circles towards the outer bolts. Be aware, the outer rocker box bolts are tensioned to just 5 foot-pounds. Socket head screws are fitted to the front of the rocker boxes and tightened securely. If these are not tight, oil can leak down the thread to the outside. Valve clearances need to be set with each valve in the fully closed position. Rotate the crankshaft till the two valves you are not setting 
are just rocking. That is, one will be just opening and the other will be just closing. Exhaust valve clearance is set to eight thousandths of an inch, inlet to six thousandths. Make sure the adjuster does not move while you secure the lock nut. I use grease to seal the rocker cover gaskets. They never leak, they're easy to remove and can usually be reused as they come away so easily when the rocker cover is removed. Do not over tighten the two larger bolts, you'll crack the rocker cover if you do. All four pushrod inspection caps can now be fitted and nipped up. We turn our attention now to the alternator. The output cable is fed up through the sealing sleeve. The rubber grommet slides over the sleeve as the stator fits into place. Three nuts secure the stator in place and then the rotor is introduced to the crankshaft. The securing nut is tightened using a tension wrench and the tab washer is bent over to ensure the nut does not work loose in operation. A taper is screwed into the end of the exhaust camshaft to guide the oil seal into place as the timing cover is fitted. Sealant has been applied to the mating surface of the timing cover which is then fitted into place. Screws are inserted and tightened up. and then the taper is removed. Next the oil pressure relief valve is assembled in place. It is designed to limit the maximum pressure to 70 pounds. Once the body is firmly in place the piston and spring are introduced followed by the cap that holds the piston and spring in place. A warning light alerts the rider of low engine oil pressure. This light is activated by a pressure switch which is now fitted to the rear of the oil filter tunnel. Since the oil tank is located above the engine, oil could gravity feed from the tank through the oil lines and pump, past the bearings and over time drain the contents of the oil tank into the sump. An anti-drain valve is fitted to stop this from occurring. A spring-loaded ball sits against the seat, cutting off the oil flow when the engine stops. The oil pump has been thoroughly cleaned and checked for wear. One of the screws that secures the pump passes through a hollow dowel that locates the pump in the correct position. A new gasket is fitted and the pump is slid into place. The screws are tightened to achieve an oil-tight fit. Next, the timing plug is fitted. It seals off a hole that allows access to timing marks drilled into the crankshaft that allows valve and ignition timing to be checked for accuracy. The oil gallery plugs are fitted next. The centre exhaust port manifold is held in place by two socket head screws which are tightened firmly in place. On the inlet side of the cylinder head, the inlet stubs are now fitted. Each one is different, so look for the letter L, C or R for left, centre and right stubs. After a lot of careful attention to detail, the engine is now complete. It's time to assemble the gearbox that will deliver the power to the rear wheel.